Welcome back to the Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery Build Series. In the last video, you saw all the components that I'm using to build my battery. So in this video, I'm going to start assembling. And the first thing I'm going to do is build a box. The box is going to be made out of glue laminated wood. You can use various materials for this. You can even buy an existing enclosure. Uh, there's lots of options out there for you to choose. For me, it came down to being in a location where my options were sort of limited. I want to be able to see the quality and also see the dimensions of a box if I were to buy an existing enclosure. And unfortunately, that's really difficult here for me in Croatia. So what I've done instead is I went to the local hardware store, their equivalent of a big box hardware store here, like a Home Depot, and just looked at the materials they had on hand. And what it came down to is glue laminated wood. The glue laminated wood is the same stuff that we use to build the addition to our fridge box that we showed in our um, fridge video that you saw with our Dometic CFX 375DZ long-term review. This stuff is made of solid wood, but instead of being an entire piece of plywood or entire block of wood, it's glued together. But it's pretty strong. It's just about as strong as regular wood. My experience with it has been pretty good building the fridge box. So I got a few more pieces. I'm going to use that to build my box. The dimensions I'm using are pretty much the exact dimensions that the current battery area is uh, taking up. Being that this battery pack is a little bit smaller than my AGM battery pack, I'm going to use the additional space that the current battery pack is using for the additional components that a lithium iron phosphate battery is going to need. So what I've decided is I'm going to build a box that is 17 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches and then 12 inches tall. I'm going to take all the components, figure out exactly where they need to go, and by building a wooden box, it also allows me to screw in components against the side of the box so they can be safe and secure. So that's my plan for today, and let's get started. Here it is. So with just some uh, basic hand tools and a couple of cordless tools, I got a Milwaukee cordless saw that's been pretty handy. It's, uh, it's a 12 volt saw, so it doesn't quite have as much power and it tended to bind a lot when I was cutting the wood. So the cuts didn't come out as evenly as I would have liked, but it'll work. So as you can see, this is 17 and a half inches this way 10 and a half inches this way and 12 inches tall and this is what the inside looks like i've added some uh l brackets down there just because the way that i built this is as i'm just using screws and butt joints so it's not the strongest joints that you can use but since i don't have a full workshop I'm just using it, but I'm using plenty of screws. As you can see, there are eight screws on this side, three screws down here, and then same all the way around. And that's why these L brackets on the inside is gonna help support the weight. Because the way that I screw the bottom in is I cut a piece that goes in flush so it didn't have to be taller. And then they're held together with these screws on the side, three on the side here, two here. So 10 screws together from the walls of the box and then with the L brackets they're fastened together with eight more screws here and eight more screws here so 18 screws all together to hold that that floor of this box so I think it's gonna be plenty strong and I drilled a couple of holes and then uh, just ran some nylon rope through this so I should be able to use it to pick it up it's not too heavy, 
but it's plenty sturdy. All right, so I think this is how I'm gonna position the batteries. I'm gonna put some foam insulation between each cell. And then I'm going to use pieces of scrap wood to kind of keep it in place. And then somehow fasten this down so it doesn't move. But it does create a problem is that these bus bars that came don't reach anymore. So I can't use these. What I'm going to use instead is I cut these pieces of copper tubing to the right size. And I'm going to squish them down, flatten them out with my hydraulic crimper. All I do is I uh, switch the die to the flat side and I just insert that in there and crimp it down until it squishes it flat. And I'll be able to do that through the entire length and then I should be able to make pure copper bus bars. So let's see how that goes. Okay, this hydraulic tool is really handy. You do have to be careful to not crimp too hard because it will apply a lot of force on the seals of the hydraulic system and you could spring a leak. Just know how much pressure this is going to handle and it should be fine. So you close the hydraulic system and then put this in between the die and just crank it down. Then just go ahead and crimp down the entire length and you should be able to have a flat, pretty flat copper bar. You don't have to do this. I'm just choosing to do it because I want it to give it some space between each of my cells. Just in case if I was ever in a very hot weather and the cells expand and contract for whatever reason, I want to make sure that there's room for it to do that. If you don't go any places where you can get really hot temperatures, it's probably not necessary. We travel all over the place and sometimes we're in the desert for a long period of time. So this is just something that I choose to do. And if you don't do this, you can easily just use the bus bars that came with the, uh, with the batteries. Alternatively, you can also just use a hammer to hammer these, uh, these copper tubing down flat which is probably what I'll use at the end once I've gotten most of it flattened out just to make sure that it's uh, the exact right profile that I need it to be. And if you have access to more supplies you could just buy copper flat bars. That's probably a lot easier. Although you know if you don't have access to that kind of material Copper tubing is widely available as a plumbing supply. Okay, so that's pretty good for now. I'm just going to use a hammer, flatten it all out, and I'll drill some holes. It should be good. Before I put the batteries in and put the bus bars on, I'm going to secure them together with this high temperature tape. You want to make sure that you're doing this, like me, doing a 4S four cells in series you want to go positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative okay that looks right here goes the tape Let the tape lock the cells together and do a couple more wraps. There we go. Now I can make all the rest of the bus bars and connect them together.
All right. So through the magic of YouTube, this battery is put together. I want to show you guys how I did it or what I did and how the wiring went. So I basically built a box and I used a lot of the, the foam padding that came with the battery to pad all the way around it. So just in case it moves around a bit, the only thing that's holding this battery in here is I put some little blocks of wood on three sides and this back side is, is against this wooden plank of the box and then the top I have this side screwed in holding the top on and then on the sides I just have the foam all all the way around and then also a little bit in between and then I made my own bus bars out of copper plumbing pipe smashed it down put some heat shrink insulation in the middle just so there's no accidental shorting and then drill some holes and then use the existing terminal bolts to uh, tighten it down and then with each with each cell this one is the battery negative and the negative has the battery negative from the BMS and then the power goes out to my smart shunt over here and then the main negative comes out here I created a new a new uh, ring terminal but without a ring yet I haven't drilled a hole yet but that is the main negative that's going out and then from first positive second positive third positive and fourth positive I have a bunch of these lead wires one set of them go into the BMS so it knows individual cell voltage another set goes to the active cell balancer which I have mounted here using VHB double-sided sticky tape stuck against this wall so it's not touching anything and then I have some extra leads here when I get the plug to connect this capacitive controller I'm gonna wire this up and this will probably lift somewhere on the outside like this or something like that and what else did I put in here I also put in my Victron smart battery sense which will sense the voltage and the battery temperature so that it could communicate with my charge controllers I also have that going to the positive here and then the negative here that's pretty much it main positive comes out here in the next video I'm going to show you guys some numbers I'm going to show you guys some data I'm going to charge this up and uh, because I have my smart shunt built in now I'll be able to tell exactly how much power goes in and out of this battery bank through the smart shunt. Oh, and the smart shunt just has a positive wire going there as well to give it power. That is my 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, 12 volt, I'm going to be using in our sprinter van. I'm not sure exactly how much it weighs yet. It weighs quite a bit, but I will try to put it on the scale some other time and see exactly what kind of weight we're talking about and then compare that with my existing two AGM batteries. So there we go. That was part two of my lithium iron phosphate battery build. Hope you guys enjoy that. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to see the next part of the series, which will be an actual capacity test of this battery pack. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.